或者共管部分，可以嚴重推行。到咗雨季，香港嘅天氣會隨時惡化，暴雨警告信號一旦生效，河道可能會氾濫或已經氾濫。為保障生命安全，市民唔好接近河道，住喺河道附近嘅居民對於留意天氣變化、視乎情況，肯定是零。如发现有人遇险，要立即报警。如有残生，请打全部热线。诶，其实成件事要你今日嘅新闻系。我惊我啲关注唔好好唔得啦。The founding president of our democratic nation has departed. Our nation has lost its greatest town. Our people have lost a part. Mandela has battled a recurring lung infection throughout the year, and although he was discharged from hospital, his relatives admitted this week he wouldn't last much longer. Word spread quickly that Mandela, eventually known by his tribal name Mahiba, had passed away. People flocked to his home in Soweto to grieve, but also to celebrate the life of a man who gave so much for the nation. Uh, he spent seven years in prison. Uh, you know, just to give uh, to the people of South Africa, what freedom means. Thank you very much for that, if I must say. Um, we lost, you know, we lost the great um, role model we, we raised. But I think the greatest thing that is really his legacy, you know, the lift on. And that legacy was forged from his success in getting all South Africans, black and white, to reject the racist nightmare of apartheid, and instead, embrace a democratic dream for the country. It isn't just South Africa which mourns Mandela. Across the world, ordinary folk, celebrities, royalty, and politicians all gushed with praise for the man they called an inspiration. At the United Nations, a moment of silence was held for Mandela. One man who often cites Mandela as someone he's looked up to is US President Barack Obama. I am one of the countless millions who drew inspiration from Nelson Mandela's life. My very first political action, the first thing I ever did that involved an issue or a policy or politics was protest against apartheid. And we've lost one of the most influential, courageous, and profoundly good human beings that any of us will share time with on this earth. He no longer belongs to us. He to the Here in Asia, words of praise from Myanmar's democracy leader Aung San Suu Kyi, who, like Mandela, suffered a lengthy oppression at the hands of authorities. And tributes from China's state leadership, the Premier Li Keqiang conveyed Beijing's condolences. As South Africans face the future without Madiba, the question people are asking is, will President Zuma continue to build on Mandela's legacy? and complete his vision of a rainbow nation. Nelson Mandela was a master of forgiveness. Before he finally became president of South Africa in 1994, he spent half his life in prison. Yet rather than punishing the regime that jailed him, he sought to win over his defeated guardians. Alan Wookie takes a look back at Mandela's life. Born in 1918, Mandela was a lawyer who rose to prominence as a fighter against white oppression. In 1942, he joined the African National Congress, South Africa's main campaigner for black equality. But South African authorities took a hard line against the group, and the ANC fought back. Thousands were killed in the violence. In 1964, Mandela and six other ANC members were sentenced to life in prison for sabotage and plotting against the government and sent to the notorious Robben Island. During his time in prison, Mandela refused several government offers for his release on condition he renounced violence. He said the burden is on the government to renounce violence, end apartheid, and negotiate. In February of 1990, the new president of South Africa, F.W. de Klerk, announced the legalization of the ANC and Mandela's release.
Mandela and the clerk were named co-winners of the Nobel Peace Prize. Then, in May of 1994, Mandela ran for president of South Africa. It's an election he won easily, but rather than punish the purveyors of apartheid that enslaved and killed his people for so many years, he established the Truth and Reconciliation Commission to try to understand what happened. All the natives of Africa are determined by the past of the North. The better than strong, not to just not the resistance. They said this not out of vengeance, but so that we can move into the future together. The choice of our nation. It's not whether the past should be revealed, but rather to ensure that it comes to be known in a way which promotes reconciliation and peace. Mandela became a champion of peace around the world. He led his country until 1999, but continued to be active in causes of promoting peace, supporting children, and fighting AIDS. Nelson Mandela, dead at 95. Alan Brooks, the FCDB News. To other news now, a new think tank to study Hong Kong and Macau affairs was officially established today, headed by a retired top Beijing official. Members insist while the group was formed just days after the government launched its consultation on political reform, it's not a sign of interference. A ceremony was held to mark the setting up of the National Association of Study on Hong Kong and Macau this morning. The former deputy director of the Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office, Chen Zhuo Er, as its head, the think tank includes more than 100 mainland Hong Kong and Macau academics. The head of the Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office, Wang Guang Yao, was among those attending the ceremony. He believes the newly launched electoral reform consultation gives Hong Kong sufficient time to come up with a consensus on how the next chief executive will be elected by popular vote. As long as people are rational about the discussion, he said. Nine deputies were also chosen, with former Central Policy Unit head Lao Tzu Kai, the only Hong Kong member among them. Other local members of the think tank include Albert Chen of the Basic Law Committee and Executive Councillor Chen Chi Kong. Chen stressed the association is not trying to set a tone for the FAR's electoral reform. He pointed out that the research group is a long-term project that would not be set up for one purpose only. Members acknowledge that the implementation of universal suffrage in the FAR will be a key topic of research. But they said preparations for the study group had started in May and its establishment just days after the launch of political reform consultation by the Hong Kong government was nearly a coincidence. Here in the city, Chief Secretary for Administration Carrie Lam defended a statement that the forgiven CE candidates must love the country, love Hong Kong, and not oppose the central government. She explained that there are certain roles that Chief Executive is required to take up according to the basic law. So the third underlying all these provisions is very, very clear that this person can only effectively and faithfully implement the basic law, which of course uh, underlines the uh, country, one country, two systems principle, and will ensure the long-term stability and prosperity of Hong Kong. And this person has to be a person of that particular character. So Hong Kong's poor air quality has become alarming in recent years with the air pollution index reaching over 100 in many areas. To improve the way it's measured, the government will replace the existing index with a new health risk-based system at the end of the year. Why some time with more? The government has been striving to meet its air quality objectives in 2020 with initiatives to reduce roadside emissions. However, the existing air pollution index, or API, used to measure pollution levels has come under criticism for failing to meet international standards. Our air pollution index is uh, related to our prevailing air quality objective of Hong Kong, which is uh, um, below the uh, air quality guidelines of the um, WHO. To improve the way air quality is measured, the Environmental Protection Department has launched a new system, the Air Quality Health Index, or AQHI. The AQHI will be ranked on a scale of 1 to 10 and above. 
and pollution levels will be divided into five different categories ranging from low to serious, giving the public health advice under different situations of air quality. The new system will come into effect on December 30th. One group we spoke to today believes the new index is a good step forward. Um, this new index is more comprehensive in the sense that uh, our existing system is actually picking the uh, one of the pollutants that is of the highest level at the moment, so it can only tell us uh, one at a time. Whereas um, the new system is actually adding all pollutants um, um, uh, risk together, so that we can have more comprehensive view of the, how the situation now is and related to our health. When the AQHI comes into effect at the end of the month, reports may show a very high or serious index reading. This is because the new system is based on more stringent assessment criteria, giving a more accurate reading. Ronnie Santana, CBD News. The Law Reform Commission has proposed tightening regulations over tariff fees in Hong Kong. The Commission's suggestions include requiring them to register with the government and to set up a commission to regulate these organizations in the long run. I think a lot of Donating to charities to help victims of natural disasters. A common act of generosity for many in Hong Kong. But how do you know if the charities are legitimate? The Law Reform Commission today put forward several solutions to tackle this problem. The first is to require all local charities to register with the government. And this list should be made available to the public. The Commission also says there should be a clear statutory definition for the term charitable purposes, a set of specifically formulated financial reporting standards for charities, and that tax exempt charities should make public information about their operations. Should any organization break the rules, the Commission has urged the government to designate a bureau or department to be responsible for enforcement action. All these suggestions are just short-term measures. Over the long run, should people find it necessary, the Commission will advise the government to establish a charity commission to regulate the organization. During the consultation, we have received a very wide, uh, I would say, a very different uh, uh, responses from the stakeholders. Uh, and a lot of charities actually opposed to the setup of the, of the charities commission. And I do believe that one of the main reasons is the lack of, uh, of uh, understanding of the implications of setting a commission because NGOs have always been operating, you know, in, on their own. So they have not been under the uh, this sort of a, a you know sort of a regulatory regime. So there's a little lack of understanding to the impact that will uh, apply to them. The Commission added a balance has to be struck while implementing these suggestions to ensure charities will be able to expand and, at the same time, fulfill the public's expectations, such as transparency. The Commission says public scrutiny is an effective monitor against the impropriety of fundraising activities. And so it is important for the government to make use of public education to increase public awareness of charities and operations as well as the duties and rights of donors. Every other can be needed. And so ahead of the news tonight. What the hell is going on? Don't be dumb and we can't run. My answer is the U.S. does not accept China's new air defense zone. And a preview of the World Cup's rules. 